All right. Hello, everybody. I am going live today with a very special webinar that, to be completely honest, I have been dreading filming. Uh, what's one of the things that we do when we sign up for this work, I guess, is to be the messenger. And I have been procrastinating all morning, uh, trying to kind of put my thoughts out of the way so that I could really kind of open up a stream of the consciousness that's really wanting to kind of throw, like throw through me and flow through me today. Um, I'm Jessica Alstrom. For those of you who have not heard of me, um, I am an international mentor channel. Um, I have an academy that we're in 130 countries that basically uh, it are all about creating that alchemist within and embodying through integration, the higher self. It's all done through quantum theory. It's done through biochemistry, specialized, organized, conscious trainings, and it's all custom to each individual's person's higher self, which we're all here to be a very unique piece of the puzzle. And we are in some very exciting times. Um, and I think that we all kind of got into our field of practice that we're in. Uh, you know, usually by, we, we, we consider it by mistake, but there are no mistakes, especially in the quantum universe. And we also know that everything is about divine timing. So for me, I started my journey uh, in 2008. I'm um, not going to go into that story because it has absolutely no relevance for where I'm going to take you today. But I do want to give you a little backstory as far as this particular now moment. In 2009, I had a, a very, I would call it abundant, large spiritual awakening that happened all at once. And things began to click in place very quickly for me, although I had no idea what was happening to me. Uh, all of my physical uh, filters were blown out. Uh, the way that I saw life, the way that I smelled life, felt life, understood life. It was almost like uh, the biggest LSD trip that one could ever take, yet I have never taken drugs, um, never really went towards any sort of substance that would take me away from the, the present moment because I had an addiction to survival. Um, I came from, you know, a, a rough upbringing where you had to stay very present and very aware. And I think that did help me increase my intuition to be able to read people and understand people. I think a lot of us who came up with less than, you know, comfortable beginnings have that innate sixth sense that helped us navigate through people's moods and energy fields to get to where we are right now. In 2009, during uh, my seventh month of pregnancy, I had a kundalini awakening and it activated all of my spiritual senses at one time. Uh, I had no idea what was happening. I had no backstory for it. I had no name to call it. I had no book to reference it. I had no mentor or teacher to tell me what was happening. But one of the core instincts that I did know about survival was I better not tell anybody what's going on with me. Otherwise, I'm going to get locked up and lose my children. And so what I started doing is I started to just learn how to make what was happening to me fit in a normal reality. It took me almost two years to get everything balanced as far as what I saw, what I felt, what I tasted, what I touched, what I knew. Uh, reading minds was very difficult. Um, you know, when you're when you're trying to be the actor of someone who isn't um, and raising kids and paying bills and surviving a, a very normal human reality was far from normal. The whole reason I'm telling you this is you probably heard this story a hundred times if you're in my community. But the reason why I'm sharing this is because when I first really started to get my sea legs with uh, my my activated abilities, I began to work with other energies outside of myself. Uh, I think the normal uh, word for it these days is channeling. And basically what it is, is you know being able to tap into different multidimensional radio stations and have different conversations with, with uh, energies on and off planet. And I was told the story that I'm about to tell you now, 10 years ago. And when I first heard this story and the um, description and the understanding of the true idea of ascension, 
I was not ready to hear it. I had no platform for understanding it. It's like a lot of our downloads that we get, they don't make sense. You know, they make total sense in the dream state or when you're, you know, thinking about it while you're driving or taking a shower. And then by the time your logical mind comes in, it makes absolutely no sense. And that's kind of really how it was for me. But what I was realizing was I was being planted something very important that would be the basics of all of my teachings. Um, and the story that I'm going to share with you today is the true understanding of darkness and light is how we perceive it through a quantum reality. And we understand that quantum is kind of a measurement that is all inclusive, that it has no beginning and it has no end. It has no shape. It has no structure. It is just potential. And when we look at dark and light this way, it really allows us to move into a space of observer so that we can understand without emotion or without um, identifying with as such a true description of understanding darkness as light and light as darkness. And this story that I was told was about what we're going to go through as a collective civilization to reach our ascension, all right? Now, the ascension was written about in the Bible and all of the spiritual texts since the very beginning of time. So this is not new information. And the prophets have been talking about the great wars and the famine and, you know, the viruses for, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years. So what is happening right now on the planet is not new information, although it feels new to us because we're living very different lives and very, very um, abundant lives in the, in the understanding that what it does, what we have to do to really create our reality here. And so when I was shared this story, it really didn't set in. I was excited because obviously love wins. I'll give you the end right now. Um, the potential of where we're heading as a planet, as a species, um, as a collective is, is all good, you know, as, as what we're here doing right now is the fundamental, most important thing that we have ever done in the history of the universe itself is we are in the process of a very long drawn out multi-dimensional war. Now you've been hearing for a long time, you know, World War Three, World War Three. Well, we've been we've been really in the depths of World War Three for a few thousand years now, and this idea is very much a multi-dimensional war because Earth is a multi-dimensional planet, and because cause and effect, and yin and yang, and dark and light are all supported on Earth within the free will zone of creation, all things are technically allowed. So a lot of things are worked on and worked through on earth because it can be this and it can be that. There isn't one way, there isn't one thing that is grown here. There wasn't, there isn't one species because earth has vortexes and gateways and wormholes that that allow her to be a conduit for the rest of the universe. Earth is a very centralized location for creation. You know, there's a lot of experimentation. There's a lot of history. Earth is known as the living library. It uh, is and has every species in the entire universe, either birth planted or fossilized on her here now everything that ever was, that ever will be exists on earth. And because there are gateways and dimensions and there's underworlds and there's overworlds and there's inner worlds and there's parallel worlds, earth can be a very unique place to travel, to channel, to hide, to harvest, to grow, to kill, right? And we're looking at earth as one big Petri dish of the universe. And for a very, very long time, the living library was a very peaceful place of contraction. She would move through her ascension process in her normal facilities of expansion of knowledge and learning and growth 
and light and frequency and vibration. And when she was completed her cycle, her, her birth cycle into her 12th dimensional resonance, she would contract back. She would contract all the way back to the first dimension. And slowly the sediments and the seeds and everything that had been harvested from the huge amount of experience that had occurred in the 12th dimension now becomes a fractal of consciousness, kind of like a zip drive, and it's placed into the, into the cores, into the rocks, into the crystals, into the waters, into the beings into the atmosphere and out into the suns and out into the moons and out into the other planets that allow and work in uni unity with her symmetry, all right? You have to understand that the planets that are in the solar system with earth are in symmetry with each other and harmony. And we work together in harmony to produce this evolutionary process that allows her to be the living library. Now, there was a great civilization, and not the first, I mind you, not the first great civilization, but a great civilization about 14,000 years ago where everything was being calcula calculated, strategically organized, balanced, harmonic flow, all right? And this civilization, which was predominantly divine feminine in its nature was a very nurturing, allowing, communal, very growth oriented, very harmonized civilization. And earth was the, the purpose of being on earth at that time was study and research and development. It was a civilization of advanced scientific minds. It was advanced geneticist. It was advanced species. It was advanced technologies, advanced way more than you see today. And because at the earth's core and at all cores of the earth, whether it be the atmosphere core or the core of the rock or the core of the crystal or the core of the ocean or the core of the planet itself house the most precious metals because of the information that was inside. Remember when I said zip drive, it's going to be very important that you, that you stay with me with that understanding through this message. So this zip drive that is housed in every rock and every sediment and every grain of sand and every drip of water and every, every gas that makes up the atmosphere and every cloud formation and every species of plant and every species of animal and every species of human contains the fundamental building blocks of the creation of the universe itself. Because Earth is the living library of the universe itself, all particles that have been and that have ever been in a real matter, time and space dimension exist on Earth. So you can see just how important Earth is. Okay, and we're just talking about its fractals. We're not talking about any of the other stuff we're gonna be talking about. So when another, another civilization just as equally powerful, just as equally uh, attuned to technology and frequency and vibration came to earth to work on harvesting some of these precious metals to continue their own atmosphere, right? Their atmosphere was dying. There was, go they were going through a death a death process and the only thing that was going to keep their atmosphere and technology moving forward was to harvest some of the precious metal metals that and gems and species that earth contained a lot of the life force energy is required for something that is dying yes so when something is dying it needs to find a life form it needs to find a life form to utilize as the conduit so they basically, I'm just going to give you the real, like, seriously, sorry, guys, the ghetto version of this story. Um, they came to Earth to work in peace and harmony in the beginning and, and share trade. And when it didn't go as smoothly as they wanted to because the certain civilization would not uh, dishonor the planetary structure of Earth, there became a big war. And this war ended in mass destruction. 
and more than half of the planet was actually destroyed in this war and fractals and pieces of of our messages and our technology and our rituals and our ceremonies and our medicine and our health and our species and our fragments were left behind and they were left deep 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 under underneath the earth and deep within the mountains and deep within the volcanoes and deep within the um the waters and deep within the species okay so understanding that earth was not exactly a bit, you know able to contain life for a while after this big shift because it was it wasn't just devastation of electromagnetic energy it was also radiation because nuclear war was being used in from the from the fine point of crystal so not like the nuclear war they make in, in, you know in the government but the nuclear war that can come from a crystal that is pretty much can destroy not just planets but universes okay and this particular crystallized energy uh, really made everything get real quiet for a while, okay? And, and we know that if you leave something alone long enough, it will grow back, right? It will come back. And as earth began to be fresh again and the soil became rich again and the atmosphere moved into a breathable state of being, the geneticists and the harvesters and the scientists and the technicians would return to come and sample data and come and create and but there wasn't a lot of life going on as we know it in that way yet but slowly but surely you know there was a genetic a property that was made for a humanoid that could exist in in the atmosphere and with the the climate that existed at this time and it had to be more of an a egoless um a egoless humanoid that was based in primal um i'm trying to find the words because the words are giving me are very not the same uh, very primal in its behavior very primal in its um uh, in its needs and wants, and it was based in survival. And you have to realize that because Earth is a living library, there is no, there is nothing more that happens here than scientific research. So as these animals started to survive and flourish and create community and create family and create organizations, the natural evolutionary process began to happen. Now, when this species was created, they had the the source of co christ consciousness or the the source of the light within them but they were turned all the way down which means their dna was was turned all the way down so they had no idea who they were they had no idea that they were the presence of source energy or a fractal of consciousness or awareness because their primal genes and their primal genetics were completely turned on and their desire to know or curiosity began to happen. And here's the interesting thing that began to happen because of the resonance and osmosis of the earth being a living library, which is why your personal influence of who you're around has so much to do with your vibration. You know, just being on the planet with the memories, right? Intuitive collaborations of everything that the earth knows, the whole frequency of earth is a school of learning itself. So just by drinking the water and eating the substance of the land, these, these animal humanoids began to remember themselves through the aspect of their environment. And as they began to remember themselves, they began to evolve. Now, as Earth has, was going through her re-ripening phase and she was moving back into her expansion phase, she began to produce, again, a lot of beautiful heavy metals and crystals and rocks, now all with all the new stories within them. 
So they were becoming even more valuable. It's like a forest fire that creates the most abundant ash because in the ash is, is fertile memories of, of the, 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 at the aspect of what was right. And so as the earth began to ascend back great armies of this particular um, race, and I'm going to call them the Anunnaki, but not everybody says that they're the Anunnaki. I'm just getting that this is the Anunnaki race. Decided to set up camps and utilize the fabrication of this humanoid into a stronger, more focused human expression that could be controlled and dominated through fear, right? Now, you have to remember the absence of, of love is is fear, right? It's not hate, it's fear. So fear is something that causes your primal danger centers within the body to lock up and you lose conscious awareness. So fear is utilized to control the masses. So only giving them one extra strand of DNA activated within them, even though they had 12, they turned another one on because what was happening was these like clones, these humanoids that they were creating began to die very quickly because they would run away or their bodies would die in, you know, working 12, 14 hours, you know, a day carrying rocks and they were, you know, abused and there was a lot going on and they didn't have a lot of desire to live because your desire to survive at a certain point right? But your desire to thrive is what they needed to turn on. So they needed to turn on the second chakra. Now, the second chakra was donated by basically the, the Syrians who are the master architects of creation. So now, because the second DNA was activated, the, the second chakra was um, activated, now these humanoid slaves could procreate now there is a desire to live. Now there is a desire to create life. Now there is a desire to work hard. Now there is desire. So the first chakra, the root chakra given to the collective through the reptilian race was now having a reason to live. And because the sacral chakra also contains the harmonic resonance of reality creation itself, because in order to create life, I must know how to create my own universe, my own reality, my own projection. If I can create another life, then I can create another life for myself. And they could not turn that part off. They could not turn the part of the sacral frequency off that says, I create my reality. Because when you turn on, I create life, you also turn on, I create reality. And that's when it got much more difficult. Yes, they were procreating and they were having lots of generations of slaves and they were having lots of generations of abundance in, you know, being able to procreate these slaves. But they didn't expect that what was technically happening was in the second chakra, that being was moving closer to its remembrance of God itself. It was remembering itself. It was moving into a state of knowing itself. And this knowledge of self was birthed into the child, okay? It was birthed into the child and the child was within the first seven years of its life remembering who it was as God itself. It was remembering its parallel existences. It was remembering that it could create reality and it was very, very powerful. Well, what the Anunnaki realized about this problem and solution, because everything is always in duality on earth, everything is a problem and everything is a solution. And I'm gonna get to that a lot in your present moment. But in this problem that they created of these beings being able to fully awaken and remember they were God, they were also producing the child that knew it was God. And when they would rip the children away that said too much or spoke too much or knew too much, 
and brought the child in, what they realized was it wasn't what the child knew that made it valuable. It was what the child was. And when they would deconstruct the child, I'm saying that in a nice way, what they realized is everything that they were ever searching for on earth, the heavy metals, the the precious gems, the gold, the copper, the silver, the iron, the um, water, the genetics, and most important, the fractal of God consciousness was all present in the blood. You see, you think that this is a, a economic war, this three, this, this World War Three. This war is about blood. This is about the central essence of the universe that is the river of blood. It is the most richest commodity in the entire universe because in the blood is the harmonics of the entire universe until it's tainted, until it moves into pain, once it, it moves through its non-linear purification point where it starts to get jaded and pain begins to move in and they begin to forget, right? That's why the child usually forgets its past existences by the time it's seven, because that window of amnesia of perfect knowing within the blood and the body and the consciousness only exists to the point where the child is allowed to be authentic. When the child is removed from its authentic remembering of who it is, it moves into a place of not being worth very much, all right? Because in order for the child to be worth anything, it either has to be in its highest level of ecstasy or its highest level of fear. And what they realized is when they tortured the child, the adrenaline in the human body used that was designed to make a slave strong that made you 600 times stronger than yourself was now activating the blood 600 times its potential because it was creating this acidic um, hallucination experience within it. It was like no drug on the planet has ever been able to come close to the blood of a child who is afraid. I know this is really hard to listen to. It's hard to say. But there is no more valuable commodity on this planet than a child's blood who is deathly afraid. So now this planet just got a lot wealthier with this commodity. Not could we harvest our, our minerals and our golds and silvers and coppers and diamonds from the land and, and, you know, use the water and use the slaves that were created. But the child itself was the true gift to the royal energies. So the children that were worth it were harvested. And the women who created these children were taught that they were worthless. Now remember that the sacral frequency, although given to a man and a woman, the man uses it to plant the seed and recharge his essence. And the woman is designed through her sacral chakra to take the seed and nurture and grow the seed and basically take the energy from the, give the energy to the man and take the pain from the man. So he would plug into her, into her embodiment of spirit, which was, she had to be, the female body had to be fourth dimensional in order to exist, in order to create life, because the fourth dimension is this bridge you're looking at behind here. It is the bridge that we walk through consciousnesses. It's third, third dimension to fifth dimension. The woman represents the fourth dimension. She has the womb, the house of creation. So she was abused emotionally into complete ownership of herself, except the elites, because they also had the divine feminine energy working with them. All right, so 
the women were basically the slaves of the men, okay, and the elites. They were baby makers, and they were they were only designed to keep the men alive so that they could work hard to build, mind, and create a abundant place, a mine, because literally Earth was just a mine. That's what they consider it technically to this day, that Earth is just a mine, and humans are cockroaches, all right? That's pretty much what they think of us. Now... This has been the way it's been for a really long time. That's why I said this war has been going on for a really long time. Now, on the flip side of this somewhat horrible story that you're hearing is the flip side of the other side of creation, which is in a remembrance of God itself, which is in complete harmony with source energy. It is beings from the light. It is not beings from the dark, right? And it is about this understanding and how important life is and how important earth is. So about 12,000 years ago, this galactic federation of light was formed. And this, this galactic federation was a house of 12 different star systems that came together to organize a light military. Now, if you guys are hearing this for the first time, you might wanna go get your popcorn, or you might wanna turn me off because you think I'm crazy, I don't care. But this Galactic Federation of Light was formed in a reconnaissance mission to not only save Earth, because if you understand when something is raped and when something is taken and not remineralized and not given back to, eventually it will become an empty vessel. It will become an empty womb. It will become an empty shell. And even though Earth herself can go through her reascension and deascension, if she has taken her vital substances away, she cannot fulfill her prophecies. And because of this dark energy, there was no there was no compassion for life itself. It was take, 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 take. There was no giving back. There was no conscious effort to satisfy or empower anything that was considered a slave or property owned. But we understand that nothing is technically owned when it comes to source energy. So this Galactic Federation of Light was created and it was disseminating on the Aboriginal cultures and very unorganized cultures that the the Anunnaki found no need in. So these earlier life forms that still roamed the planet with animals uh, that were planted here specifically to keep the planet in harmony, they began to work with the elders of these Aboriginal cultures, this, this galactic federation of light and talk about the plans that were going to be happening now right? Because time doesn't technically exist in the universe. So 14,000 years, this now moment, it really doesn't matter. But in order to move into allowance of the earth even being able to hold a higher vibrational consciousness, we had to wait for the Galactic Federation to be able to live and breathe on the planet until the planet moved into the fifth dimension. So it was an off-limits Co cooperation, but it was a secret ops mission up until the last couple of thousand years ago. So the Galactic Federation has been working with the Aboriginal cultures, the Indian cultures, the beginning cultures um, for thousands of years and implementing and downloading into the system of man and into the system of the slaves that did get away and retreat into the mountains and into the valleys and into, into the planet, uh, ocean communities and basically hibernate, live life as they could. I mean, if you look back at the yoga cultures, if you look back at the Tibetan cultures, if you look back at all of these beginning cultures, they have never wavered from their truth, their belief systems, or their harmonics. They were they're witnessing this, but there wasn't much they could do because the planet was being run and controlled by this dark energy. And so I want to take a moment a little bit and explain to you what dark energy is because you're like, there's no such thing as dark and light. You just said that. And I'm just telling you a story. 
in the most human way that I possibly can because it's a nonlinear story that is actually working in dimensions and parallel existences rather than the story that I'm telling you now. It, it's not actually happening this way. It's happening more in a parallel position, but I'm trying to give your brain a linear experience because that's the way that I can understand it. So if we back up from the story of the Anunnaki and the story of Earth and the story of the ascension that we're in right now, we could go to another time in space and, and another idea that when, that when source energy, that is all there is, that is just, it is just um, vibration and frequency, light, right? It wants to know itself. So the best way for source to know itself is to stream itself. Right, just like me, I could stream to Facebook, I could stream to YouTube, I could stream to LinkedIn, I could stream to Instagram if I wanted to. Yet all of those versions that would be looking at through the observer of a different perspective would see me. So the consciousness itself, the source itself streams itself multidimensionally in, in the number doesn't even exist fractals out. Boom, right? And I always like to teach my class that it's like the metaphor to teach your child is like a big old disco ball that's covered in mirrors and it explodes, right? And each tiny particle is a mere reflection of itself, right? Exists in time and space as its own consciousness. That would be you. You'd be a piece of source energy. You'd be a piece of the collective. You would be a piece of unity. You'd be a piece of God, right? You, right there. Yes, that makes you unworthy. I mean, that makes you worthy, not unworthy. That makes you very valuable. That makes you the most valuable thing in the universe because you are a living, breathing house of source energy, right? Okay, so when these fractals, when these streams went out, it was all in the desire to know thyself, right? I would like to know myself. Because as I am, I mean, if you've ever been a forest, you don't know you're in a forest. So source energy is trying to learn that what it is through an observation from a different perspective. So it streams itself in multi-dimensional aspects of itself and it goes forth to have many, 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 many different experiences. And because the only way to truly have an experience is to have both sides of the perspective, it cannot create wisdom within itself unless it has experienced the opposite of itself. So it said, these streams of consciousness, I want you to go find the opposite of what I am. And these streams of consciousness, I want you to be in the image of that I am. I am the light. I am the love. I am the harmonics. I am creation. I am God. Over here. Okay, what does it mean to not be God? What does it mean to not be I have to experience, I have to find an experience in the universe where I can feel and perceive myself as disconnected from the stream. I have to experience myself as disconnected from the stream to not be God, okay? Because as long as energy is flowing to my lamp, my lamp is going to turn on, right? As long as the stream of energy is flowing to my lamp, my lamp is going to turn on unless it's broken, unless it's disconnected, unless that wire is cut. So there were many, many streams and we could say in the universe, half of the streams of consciousness decided to intentionally have the experience of disconnecting their stream. But it's only the it can only be from the feeling of being unplugged because there isn't ever any true unplugging. That energy is still moving, but it's just disallowed now. It's saying no thank you to the stream of consciousness because it can't ever unplug of that which it is. It can never ever cut the cord of that which it is. It has to pretend Okay, so these fractals of consciousness that spread out into the universe to have experiences as the opposite side of the stream, right, went into the void and went into the darkness. Now, imagine that the, the analogy that I can give you is this, this 
very embodiment of source energy that is no longer connected to the stream of consciousness is just basically a material that does not work. It does not work. So as it leaves source energy, it still has a desire to live because it has the remembrance of source energy. It has the embodiment of source energy in all of its fibers. And it begins searching for a host that feels like the stream of consciousness. So this is kind of like your remote at home that requires batteries. Okay. Your remote is going to require batteries in order to work. Now, because it believes, because it's choosing to believe, because it's having this physical exp expression to disbelieve that it is source energy, it is now searching for a life form so it can have a unique experience through what is connected to source energy. So it has to find something that is connected to source energy and utilize the energy of that, right? Now, from a place of light and love, this looks very destructive. But when you look at your remote and the batteries, you're like, well, it just doesn't plug into the wall. So it has to take batteries because it's more mobile. I want you to think about that concept. The further away you get from God, the more mobile you are, but then you run on battery. So the further you get away from God, the less you could actually be plugged in. So that's a good metaphor for you to understand the darkness and light of where we are right now. So if I am battery operated, then I'm going to drain that battery and I am going to need something else. Well, this was such a unique experience having this reality disconnected from God that it became its, a whole other game within itself to survive. Because there is one thing about consciousness that it has this innate ability to survive, survive, even under the impression that it's disconnected from source energy, even though it feels that it is not connected to God at all. And as it moves away, it begins a life of suffering, starvation, deprivation, isolation, loneliness, despair, disorder, hunger, pain, right? Because if you've ever cut off your circulation, when it starts to come back, it's painful, okay? So you need to understand that frequency and vibration is not different than this. That when that energy disassociates from its belief that it is God and moves out into the cosmos to have its unique experience, it too can get very lost in its experience. You know, you've probably gotten lost in the story of your bills and your relationships when you are technically dreaming in a holographic universe that you are human, right? So you can see how easily distracting survival can be. And these beings that chose this very expanded experience, some of them got lost for lots and lots of different parallel existences. And they met up with each other, having the same beliefs in the same environments to survive. And they found planets that they could use as batteries. Very important that you understand this. They found life. They found battery operation life. They didn't know they could just plug back in and say, this game is over. They didn't remember because they were so hungry all the time. You can't think about anything else when you're hungry. You can't think about anything else when you're in pain. You've probably been, part of you has been mad at God your whole life, but you're not thinking about that right now. You're not thinking about the part of you that's disconnected. You're thinking about the part in others that is disconnected. So these disconnected beings found life. They found agreement. They found a source of power but they knew that they would move all the way through that power and they would need to relocate. Okay. They would need to keep consuming different battery centers, different civilizations, different planets, different suns. Because if you think about what the sun is, that's like your biggest phone charger that you could exist. That's a battery, like those big daddies that you can take on the airplane. That's like what the sun is to these beings. 
And these beings basically learned how to genetically recreate themselves because they can't create life without source energy. So they were very kind of um, customized in their genetics of how they looked and they created more minion and master genetics to serve them under them and work with them. And they became very empowered. And when they found earth, it was a reconnaissance mission that they were working on to find a new land to host. But they could not necessarily live on earth when earth was thriving because the vibration was too high. So they had to create kind of AI technologies and beings that were less, um, less than they were to be able to sustain life because there was too much source energy on life and whatever you are not, you actually are repelled by. Right. So that the frequency of Earth was actually too strong for these beings to live on planet. So they created sub genetic species of themselves. That's why when you look in the stories of the Egypt and all of these other stories of where the Anunnaki set up camps, you can see how different their genetic uh, entities looked from each other. But a lot of them were created out of the essence of the opposite of God. Now, some people call, you know, that Satan or the demons, whatever you want to call it, it's darkness and it's light, but this is actually how it was created. And just like any form of life, it wants to survive. So these light beings that chose the path to stay in the resonance and harmonics of the God source energy remained in a blissful, loving reality that thrived in creation, not destruction. They did not consume planets, they grew planets, they grew solar systems, they grew technologies. And because Earth is such a valuable place in the universe that it was in the best interest of the army of light to come in and assist when it was time, when it was time for the Earth to move into our ascension, ascension phase. Because if she was unbalanced, just like your body, some of the times you guys feel crazy in your life is because you don't have the right minerals. And this is done on purpose. Your water is stripped down to a place where schizophrenia and overthinking occur when the body lacks certain minerals. And so if Earth lacks certain of her vital minerals, she will explode just like you explode when your hormones are out of balance. Your hormones are technically out of not out of balance. Your minerals are out of balance. And that is what makes you feel crazy. And that's what makes her explode. So the Galactic Federation of Light needed to come in and help remineral remineralize her and move her into a place where she could facilitate her ascension process, working in collaboration with herself because she is a being of light, right? But because this is a free will place, she has agreed to allow all experiences within her, just like you as a mother, you've allowed your pets, your kids to do crazy things and you still love them because she considers everything within her as her children. Even the bad energy, even the good energy, even the dark energy, even the battery operated energies. Well, once the Illuminati took all that they could and the planet started to move into light, there was a genetic breeding going on. A genetic breeding of the Anunnaki and the humanoid woman. OK, and this went on for thousands of years to create the perfect what they call human. OK, now this was basically source energy and the absence of God coming together. So it was almost like if Satan it's himself and God itself came in and had a child, this is the birth of the elites and families and societies and so-called Illuminati's that is the descendant of the migration and the, the collaboration of the humanoid and the Illuminati. These, the, the essence of what they say the perfect race is. Because when you are battery operated, 
as a remote. The remote thinks it's the most important thing in the universe. It doesn't know that the lamp across your hallway is plugged in and can turn on whenever it wants. It does not realize that it is not as powerful as the lamp because it is so focused on its own survival and its own beingness that it becomes the most selfish, consuming life force in the universe to itself. It is the only thing that matters. So it is a very arrogant species. It is a very unloving, uncompassionate, unempathic, unfeeling, unharmonized, basically designed to rape and pillage and consume energy. Now these women, that the the dark seeds bred with were not were so broken down and um unworthied in their in their concept of their belief system and see these anunnaki's knew that because earth was a free will zone and it was technically considered a holographic experience it knew that if the woman's belief within herself is that she was less than that she would be easily controlled, right? No, not knowing all along that the women were the dominant species on the planet next to the child, okay? So the woman was integrated into her root belief system down at the core root of her root chakra that she was unworthy until a queen was produced, just like in a beehive. So when a queen is produced, she is the most worthy and she is protected and she is the one who has all of the babies, right? Until another one like her is created and then she will have all of the babies and it has to stay a very pure bloodline and she has to be guarded and protected and only she herself knows how powerful she is, okay? All right, so we're moving up to our timeline here. So we're moving through the world being very, very broken and asleep and disconnected from source energy and abused and raped and pendle and, 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 you know, poverty and lack while everything in an underworld situation is a world of abundance is a world of gold and silver and crystals and diamonds and, and food and sacrifice and rituals that praise this name of the blood, praise the name of the flesh, praise the name of the gods that they have created out of the battery operated remotes. That's why I want you to look at this. I don't want you to look at these beings as powerful. I want you to look at these beings as being battery operated and they feed on fear. You must know this. Okay, so let's speed up our timeline here. So we have sent through the Galactic Federation of Light many, 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 many very, very um, worthy uh, spokesmen, okay, representatives. They have come in all of the different master teachers that have graced our earth. And we have remembered ourselves through the Galactic Federation working with the Aboriginals and the Indian cultures and the beginning cultures that, that actually lived through the great end and beginning hold within their bodies, within their children, within their memories, within the consciousness of earth, within the, the, the lands and the species of earth, all of the truth of what this planet is and what source energy is and what life is and who we actually are. That's why the text, that's why the libraries were burned. That's why everything, anyone who talked of these things was murdered. Still happening, right? Still, ha we're still fighting this galactic war that has been going on for thousands of years. Here we are, source energy plugged into God itself and we are afraid of some batteries? but this is what belief does. And you have to understand that because earth is vibration herself, she works in the harmonics of vibration. Everything is a tuning fork. Everything is a vibration. Everything is a holographic experience. It's like, a, it's like the most perfect greenhouse that you could ever create. But at temperatures, minerals have to be perfect in order for her to bloom, right? So everything has been working on the dark to keep the planet 
alive just enough so it can be siphoned. Humans alive just enough to be slaved or their blood being taken. And the way that the masses through her Earth's ascension process, because when she moves into a higher dimension, humans get smarter because as she moves from the third dimension into a fourth dimension, our DNA works as a tuning fork with her and begins to light up. So if I'm in the second frequency or the second chakra called uh, sacral, which is I am that I am that I create that I am, I create life, I create worlds. Then when in my third chakra, I can start demonstrating that. Now it has taken us thousands of years as a collective species when we have been indoctrinated and poisoned and beaten and raped and stolen and made slaves and you know lied to for our third chakra to turn on, but it has. Our third chakra is on. And there are thousands and thousands and millions of people who demonstrate that they are unafraid every single day. And that's why this war is almost at its end. So you guys think because this truth is being exposed that you're down some crazy conspiracy theory that, that this is just starting. You guys, this is ending. You would not know about this if it was just beginning because the world is being fought. This world war is being fought in another dimension, in a different parallel reality that you don't have access to unless your consciousness is at a certain level, which means there's layers and layers and layers and layers of things going on on this planet right now that are way above your pay grade and way above your ability to be aware. Because look at what you're aware of, who's wearing a mask and what color skin we have. You see, the way we've been controlled is to separate ourselves, to devalue women, to take women away from each other, to make the child remember that it is below adults, to take a child and siphon energy away by telling them false truths in our education system, poisoning the water, injecting vaccines in within them when they're very babies if they are chosen to become a slave. Okay, I'm going to tell you, the babies that are the most valuable on the planet don't have vaccines in them because it taints the blood. So they are looking for people who don't vaccinate their kids and the ones who vaccinate their kids, they're using as the slave force because they will be able to build an immune system very strong to sustain what is coming. Okay, so there is millions of children that go missing all the time. Now, blood is still the biggest commodity in the dark for the dark seeds. And in about, I don't know, about 2,200 years ago, and you guys, I'm trying to get the timelines right, so bear with me. This is definitely not a perfect story. This is one version of a story. Take what resonates, throw away the rest. About 2,200 years ago, there began to be seeds planted very specifically in mother's wombs all around earth. And this was the seed that was sent from source energy itself to be able to hold a vibration that did not move into darkness. This vibration was unable to agree or be manipulated easily. This frequency was the essence of the crystal or the essence of the Christ, the essence of the source energy. And it was a very specific seed of consciousness designed to hold unconditional love at its root chakra. It was unlike any species that had been on the planet as of yet. It was a fully ascended master source energy seed that was planted 144,000 seeds 2,200 years ago, okay? Now there was so much dark on this planet at the time that most of them did not make it, right? They did not make it or they were taken or the darkness destroyed them and they went crazy because they could not go along with the pain and punishment and survival of this planet. They were wired to thrive. They were wired for joy. They did not understand. And the next big crop 
of seeds came, get this, in the 30s. You're like 22,000 years ago. You look at the Mayan calendar ends. You look at all these things ending. You're like, what? In the early 30s, another crop of star seeds was sent from, the, from Source Energy and the Galactic Federation of Light. These crops were more sensitive to light and frequency, but they were also uh, matured. Now, they couldn't sustain the food as well. They couldn't sustain the hydration point the way Earth was or the televisions or things like that. But they could hold the frequency of curiosity. They could channel. They could tell the stories. They could channel through music and art and sciences. And these are the seeds that came. We call these the original indigo seeds because their arc field is very indigo in the 30s and every 10 years after that a new seed crop has been sent to earth was specifically designed to be the second coming of the christ incognito and this has been to plant themselves strategically waiting for the earth to move into the fifth dimension to end this war completely because it takes special ops and undercover seeds to be planted into bodies that are wired, built, and designed out of suffering. The body that you're sitting in may hold the Christ consciousness, but the body that you're sitting in is a disseminant and a, a remnant of all of the pain of the wars of the past. All of the fear implants, all of the starvation implants, all of the slave implants and everything is controlled by frequency and vibration the water you drink the food you're allowed to eat you know the owner of nestle actually said that water should not be free for humans that they should have to pay for it you can you can know what family he's playing for he's a battery operated dude right he said that so our food our medicine our televisions our music, our internets, everything is infiltrated through this dark battery operated energy. And it takes someone with a pure conscience, a pure consciousness to be able to vibrate above that, right? To vibrate above this. But I'm gonna give you the second part of this story because this is where you come in. This is where we come in. You're probably thinking, okay, I'm probably a star seed or I'm probably, you know, this because I don't understand cruelty and I would never do that and I would never hurt a child and I would never, you know, take the blood and I would never do this. But here's the thing you have to understand because this is a multidimensional war and we have been getting ready for this particular end. This is the end game, right? This is like the Avengers end game, right? Because we are getting ready for the end. There has been the last 14,000 years that there has been special operations going on in this planet, which means many of the star seeds that are here now working for the team of the light had to embody the reality of being a battery at one time. We had to play for the dark. So it's almost like those, those, um, those movies that you see where it's like the star of the character is a cop and he's a really good guy and he's a detective and he has to go undercover in like a gang world. And when he's in this gang world, he gets lost because he falls in love with the gang's, you know, head gang's daughter. And he has to choose worlds. He's in love and he loves these thugs and he loves these people because he can see they're actually like, there's, there's like family there, but he's not a bad guy. And he wants to go back to his real life. And so he's pushed and pulled. And so what has happened over the last 14,000 years is there has been so many of you who have come here and infiltrated earth and worked in the dark harmonics of earth. And you have, you have abused the children and you have taken the children and you've raped the women and you have sacrificed and you have bathed in blood and you have sold each other and you have raped each other and you have killed each other. And because you knew that when you went through your death experience, you would take all of that data back to source energy because you were pretending, but some of you got lost. 
Some of you got lost to the darkness and some of you have been working for the last 14,000 years to get back to source energy to come here and finish the job. That's what we're doing here. That's why the darkness inside of you must be purified. Because as long as you're in judgment of anything I'm saying today about these dark batteries, you are still connected through an agreement or belief system. You're connected through shame and guilt of your Akashic records in your karmic trail of existence. I don't know how to say this in different words, but whatever is in, a, is in your consciousness, remember I say conscience? If you go into your Akashic records, you will probably remember if you're here right now for the end of times, the end of the war, the integration of darkness into light, you are not a rookie. This is not your first go. This may be the first time you're remembering certain things about being human, but it is probably not the first time that you have played for the team of the dark in order to create wisdom and identification of the story. Now let's look at the human president that we chose to end this war. You're thinking, this guy's a thug, right? He disrespects women. He does this, he does this, he does this. But if you understand that it takes fire to create fire, it takes one to know one. I'm not saying he's a dark force. What I'm saying is he knows how to speak the language. He knows the families. He knows the routines. He's the undercover cop who has been playing and tricking you because he will be our last American president. He will be our last president and he is going to end this with us. We have to end this. Now, he can only do what he can do. Now, I'm not saying he's bad or good. I have no relevance of who this man is on, as a, on a puppet level. What I am saying is he was birthed into the right families. He comes from a bloodline that is pure. He is not associated with the elites. He is not associated with the Anunnaki. He is one of the only presidents that is not related to the royal families. He is not part of what created religion on this planet that is secretly satanic. The religion on your planet is secretly satanic. Take a breath. You are taught to guilt and shame. You are taught to starve your darkness. You are taught to disregard those negative thoughts that you have within your mind. Look into your sexual fantasies. Look into where your mind goes when, th when people thrive outside of you. Look into your shadow self. Find the lineage connected to the dark battery, the dark seed. Find your body lineage, not your heart lineage, not your conscience lineage, not your source energy, your body consciousness is associated with this battery operated community that is at war with us. So by default, even though your intentions on the planet are pure, whatever disgusts you, whatever you reject, whatever blindsides you, whatever you're judging, whatever you're shaming, whatever you're guilty of, whatever humiliates you, whatever causes rage inside of you, whatever causes resentment inside of you, and whatever causes fear inside of you is connected to the dark. Because those frequencies do not exist in source energy. If you have those frequencies running through your biological biochemistry, through your quantum computer system that is you, if you have those frequencies, thoughts, vibrations lodged somewhere in the body, in the consciousness, in the field that you're using to create your reality with, your job is to find those stories and purify them with your own love. Only you can forgive you. Only you can make peace with the part that you had to play before you incarnated in this time and space. Only you can remember being the child being raped and destroyed. And only you can remember being the pedophile that did it in another timeline. I see this all the time, which is why I very rarely resonate with the spiritual community is the spiritual bypassing. It is all about love and light and harmony, but there is terror amongst spiritual beings, terror of the dark, terror of the ego terror of suffering, yet they all suffer. And they suffer because they are terrified and afraid of the abundance that is played out on human earth because they know that money technically is associated with blood.
They know that all the money on this planet is somehow created out of an exchange of blood, especially of the child. And so there is something inside of you that recoils from money, that recoils from abundance and recoils from success. Because if you were to succeed on this planet as a light worker, if you were to become rich on this planet as a light worker, if you were to become famous on as a light worker on this planet, then you would now be on the radar. The radar, the highlight. So what puts you on the radar of dark energy, of a battery operated energy? Success, talent, purity. Success, talent, purity makes you a beacon of awareness to the dark seeds. So it's almost like if a lion is sleeping, right? and a little bird is gonna walk by, that bird is gonna hold its breath and try to become invisible, okay? And so, because that bird wants to not wake the lion, there is a part of you that is terrified of waking the lion. Not necessarily within you, because you've forgotten that you are the lion, but you are afraid of getting on the radar or afraid of having so much money that you will go back to the darkness or so afraid of, of getting too much power that you will move out of alignment of, the, of your source energy and do things that you don't trust. But the only way that you could ever do that is if you had that story of you doing that before. That's the only way that you could technically be able to do that. Okay? So you have to look at where you are vibrating because i actually ran into this fear every spiritual teacher that i have ever watched get bigger than life has somehow had a smear campaign or you know there's some mole that's planted in their you know in their family and tries to destroy them from the inside out and i had a fear of that happening to me until i really tapped into my heart and said the only thing that i have to do is shine brighter shine above fear be more of my light honor more of my darkness and transcend it into light doesn't mean i'm going to honor my darkness and go be the dark because i've had many lifetimes where i have played incognito and gotten lost in the dark we all have that's how we feel more comfortable with dark sometimes that's why we associate with the darker things in life that's why we tend to move away from the light sometimes even as a light worker and go into the shadows we are drawn to the shadows in others we are drawn to the pain in others. And it is only because you are drawn to the pain inside of yourself. You are not here to rescue that being. You are here to rescue the dark within you and bring yourself back into alignment of unconditional love. And then the seed begins to bloom. And I will tell you, it's only gonna take 1% of the star seeds on this planet to fully bloom and move away from fear for this to be over like this. Boop, done, story told. Because the only thing that's keeping them fed is your disassociation of your darkness because they can plug into your fear. They remember you, they know who you are and they know where your buttons are. It's like your spouse has that tone and they know exactly what button to push to just tear you down. Well, everything, your media, your riots, your racism, your slavery, your lack of abundance, your poverty, your starvation, your um, sick bodies are all constructed to keep you slaves. And the ones who shine are disseminated. They are tried to pull into that world. Look at your celebrities, look at your world leaders, look at your athletes, look at the ones that you're coming out in the news right now as being on a certain island, witnessing a lot of these thousand year old rituals, okay? So that's what one of your core fears are. Your job is to get over that. Because as long as you're afraid of being seen and heard and authentic, you will play small on this planet and technically you will be able to be mind controlled because fear is the only thing that they use to mind control. Fear, hunger, starvation, desire. That is what's used for mind control on the planet. If you don't have the desire, if you don't have the fear, 
and you're saying, okay, Jess, how do I get rid of this? Well, I'm currently doing this workshop called Vision Quest, and we are going down deep into the pits of our own darkness right now, discovering those places. So that is what my community is doing right now. But I can recommend that it's time for you to go on a vision quest and stop judging your neighbor and your parents and the Illuminati and stop looking at world leaders and stop looking at celebrities as they are bad. Stop being so shocked at what has been going on for 14,000 years and has been the norm. The light on this planet is new. It is in harmonics with the Earth's vibration and she's quickly moving into the six dimensions where we'll have full ET disclosure. Pharmaceuticals will, will be completely deconstructed by the year 2023 if light workers, if light workers would turn around and face the darkness and give yourself a big hug. I love you. You had to do what you had to do. I love the children. I love the animals. I love nature. I love myself. I love the things that I've done when I wasn't me. I love the things that I did when I was disconnected from source energy. And take a look at your beef and your anger with God. Your religion actually made you hate God because God's never been there for you. That's part of the indoctrination of religion. It is a controlled satanic measure to implement your own demise. It is very important that you turn around and you look at this darkness that you keep attracting in others, in yourself. If you're attacked, judged, um, disfigured in any way by anyone outside of you, it is a reflection of what is going inside of you because you are in a holographic experience where you are creating your reality by looking in the mirror. Every face you look at, every Facebook, paste you re Facebook post you read, everything you witness is a reflection of you. And how you know that it is no longer vibrating in a negative pattern is you will feel complete neutrality. You will feel an absence of wrong or right. You will be able to look at a story of Illuminati and you will feel neutralized by it and you will know exactly what to do as a countermeasure to the intention. I will shine brighter. I will love more. I will take care of the kids that are in my house. I will take care of the child that is within me. I will reparent my ego. I will reparent my own inner child. I will heal my ego from its negative dark tendencies. I will clean up my sexuality because my sexuality is my immortality. It is my creation. It is my ability to know who I am. This is your job. This is our job. It only takes 1%. We can do this if we turn around and stop looking at what we think an enemy is, whether it's a mask or a politician or a Illuminati or a dark force or a pedophile and look in the mirror and find that which you are and love yourself back to light. Love every aspect of you and move into alignment. What I can recommend is that you work on your physical bodies, work on deconstructing the patterns and belief systems that are at the root of you, buried deep in your subatomic structures and cellular memories. This is hidden in your muscle tissue, your fascia, your cells. This is an opportunity for you to clean your bodies out. This will help you move into higher levels of alignment and move into the grace of source energy so that you can see your darkness with love, without judgment. Because when you look at yourself with judgment and you look at the dark things that you had to do to get ready for the war that's being fought right now, you actually start to play for the wrong team and you suffer. We're moving into heaven on earth. Love wins. This is already over. We're just reenacting the possibilities from different platforms right now. Love has won. This is our time. Let's take the power away from the batteries. Let's plug everybody back in, including ourselves. And let's illuminate and light up the world because this is our opportunity and it really is this simple. Take your focus off of what disgusts you and annoys you and find the things to disgust and annoy you about yourself. You will find the dark seed within you. You will move it back into alignment of love. You will set yourself free and you will illuminate the entire universe with just your presence. You are loved. You are guided. You are cared for. You are here in the most important time of history. You chose this. You are worthy. You are deserving. You are also protected and you are not alone. You have a team of guidance that is loving you unconditionally, no matter what your body says and, and holds within it. Your job is to be the representation and the child that is, was taken from this planet. Become the child and your child knows the way home. Your child has the imagination. Your child knows the direction. It knows where the light is in the dark tunnel. 
find your inner child okay and turn it back on utilize your ego to parent with love and discipline and consistency this inner child and you will have your navigation of your intuition your spiritual gifts will turn all the way back on you will begin to vibrate out see you don't have a wound of not being seen and heard you're terrified of being seen and heard and you need to own that it's time for you to be seen and heard because you are important and you are forgiven and you are loved unconditionally by this universe and you have the central plug you are plugged into source energy utilize that through your heart chakra turn it all the way on like a care bear and say i am here to love thank you guys for joining me this is mostly for my community i wanted you to have this full story i have set myself free a little bit today telling you this i hope this gives you a better opportunity to know what you're supposed to do next and feel through your own discernment of your own light and i will see you guys all